that off my chest because now I've got to head up to the White House for my shift with the Silent Sentinels, or I'll have to let my banner do all the talking for me. It meant a lot for you to be here with me today. Just having you stand here and show your support gave me courage. <laughs> oh, I need to make sure I talk to that journalist. Make sure those photos get in the national paper. We can use the power of the press to our advantage. Good publicity, bad publicity. At least it gets people talking about the issue. Really makes them think about it. And aside from the war, this is the topic of conversation. There are many suffragists who don't think it's appropriate to be protesting right now. They believe that if women support the war effort now, then they'll be rewarded with the right to vote when the war is over. And they may be right, but women have already waited until the end of a war, the Civil War. Yes, the 15th Amendment did grant voting rights regardless of race or color, but to men only. And here we are, two generations later, still campaigning for the right to vote. Now, more than ever, women of every race and social standing should join our cause. The banners held by the Silent Sentinels have become more provocative in their call for equality. This has only further embarrassed the administration and outraged the crowds. The police have continued making arrests and the prison sentences have gotten longer. I am nervous. I really hope the police aren't arresting any of the suffragists up at the White House today. I've never been to prison, not even for a visit. And I hear they're treating the suffragists even worse than the regular inmates, but the suffragists are sneaking notes and letters out of the prison and uh, detailing the conditions, and the gruesome details are nauseating. Lucy Burns was arrested a few weeks ago for picketing the White House, and she started a hunger strike in prison, refusing to eat in order to call attention to the fact that the suffragists are being unfairly held as political prisoners. I know, it doesn't seem to make sense to starve yourself in prison, but I suppose that no government official wants the starvation deaths of upstanding, law-abiding women on their hands. It will be a publicity nightmare. But I'm starting to hear that the prison authorities are using painful methods of force-feeding on the women who are refusing to eat. Alice Paul, our fearless leader, is being force-fed three times a day in the psychiatric ward. Perhaps because courage in women is often misdiagnosed as insanity but really it's just to discredit her and her leadership in the movement. I hear it's painful, awful and humiliating. They say the force feeding is for our own good, but it is painfully clear that their actions are to punish us for exercising our First Amendment freedom of speech, which we've exercised through silence and fasting, mind you. But if these suffragists can continue to endure such torment, and word of their inhumane treatment reaches beyond the prison walls and into the general public, it can only increase awareness and sympathy for our cause. It can only highlight our dedication and strength for women's suffrage. And if our movement is successful, hopefully, future revolutionaries who want to work towards amending unjust laws can learn from our strategies of peaceful protest. And let's not forget using publicity in the press, petitions, pageants, parades, processions, proving our value and worth by contributing to our communities and demonstrating that sometimes we have to bring the message to the doorstep of those in power, which for us means standing right in front of the White House where President Wilson has to see our call for democracy. We can use all these strategies to build awareness and continue to improve upon an American democracy that supports equality for all her citizens. There will still be struggles after we win the vote, but without the right to vote, we are powerless in all future endeavors for equality. I can't just sit back and wait for things to change. We've come so far, but it is possible to go backwards. I may just be an ordinary person, but it takes lots of ordinary people like you and me to move our democracy forward. I know you feel you can't come with me to picket the White House today. I understand, but you can contribute in your own way. There are so many ways that you can help the suffrage movement. On that note, I'm going to the White House to stand up for myself and my children and my children's children. And maybe one day they will stand up for someone too. Mm -hmm.